Let's talk about sausage party. This is a word. This is a world premiere. This is a word. Okay, so before we get into the main topic for this video, I want to quickly update. First of all, I had not heard from Crazy Old Vegan for a, quite some time. And Yesterday, there was a brand new post up there, so I was really, really excited. A few months ago, Lori contracted Lyme disease, but Lori had been, you know, really struggling to, you know, get well after it. I mean, it really knocked her off her feet. And so I was really excited to see a video from Lori talking about curing her Lyme disease. So, Laurie, so congratulations. Um, you were in my thoughts, and I'm so glad to know that you are doing better. So Just Glowing Me did a video yesterday, which was the <laughs> fulfillment of her obligation as part of the talent show competition. And I really enjoyed Just Glowing Me's video. Uh, it was not at all what I expected, but it was what I had hoped for. So anyway, all that to say, thank you so much, Just Glowing Me, for fulfilling um, that wish of mine and posting a video talking about your other hidden talents. Just waiting to hear from the Chocolate Vegan, the Vegan Batman, and still waiting to see a display of talent from Crazy Old Vegan as well. So you guys know I am coming up on 1500 subscribers and I would love to do a 1500 subscriber Q&A. So you can either leave your questions in the comment section below or you can reach me at Ask me one, that's A S K numeral one at regflowers.com. Send me your questions and I will do my best to include as many of them as possible in my next QA celebrating reaching 1500 subscribers. I hope that happens. Did I say 1500 or did I say 15,000? So now we're going to talk about Sausage Party. What the? G I went to see Sausage Party, the film really pushes the boundaries. I mean, just simply the fact that race is brought up in the film is interesting and the clashes that happen between races and uh, people, uh, uh, representations of peoples who have been subjugated and how those <laughs> individuals who are parts of those subjugated groups might feel. So that's stuff that kind of comes up in the film, but it's all filtered through this very dicey, <laughs> um, these very dicey stereotypical representations of those, of individuals from those groups. I mean, for example, there's a character that is supposed to be kind of an indigenous character who is uh, represented by a bottle of alcohol, which kind of makes a play on the stereotype that, you know, Native American peoples are alcoholics. And um, not to say that there's not um, maybe a disproportionate rate of alcoholism within uh, indigenous populations. I don't know, but I don't know that that's something that necessarily needs to be the brunt of a joke, especially if the only representation that we're seeing, uh, the only reference to Native peoples, American Indians, Native Americans, is a bottle of alcohol. Mm, I don't know. Basically, the same old problematic images that we see in every film, only it's a cartoon and they're playing food. And that's my main issue with this film. The film goes to great lengths to uh, induce in the viewer sympathy for these inanimate objects, these inanimate food objects. And uh, I can imagine when they were sitting around the creative table saying, hey, what if we give food feelings and then have that food like trying to, you know, escape their fate of being, you know, eaten in this comic film. The big problem with that is that does happen. There is a horrible o ordeal that certain entities, certain sentient beings, go through in the process of becoming that inanimate food, which they in the film have then brought back to life to give us this experience of feeling sympathy for them and rooting for them not to be eaten. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know if they 
in making the film were aware of this irony that was present the whole time. It was strongly, strongly present for me. It, it was very strongly, strongly present for me that this there was this irony that uh, we were being expected to kind of go along for the ride. It's just a movie. It's just fun, right? That just again, nothing is just anything. So we're just supposed to go along for the ride and accept that this food that would never be able to speak, never be able to defend itself, never be able to express these feelings and emotions about becoming, you know, our sustenance. But the reality is that isn't far-fetched at all. There are sentient beings, you know, at the rate of 56 billion animals a year, again, not including even aquatic life, that are murdered every year to become that that cute little thing in the package that we can put a face on and have laugh and have be funny. So um, I, I found the film very problematic. However, here's the twist. I would suggest taking friends to see <laughs> Sausage Party because what better film to bring up that cognitive dissonance that we experience when we have these feelings, when we, you know, we, we definitely have this moralistic way of viewing, you know, death and murder and causing pain to a sentient being. So by making the inanimate food sentient, we're able to feel for it. And so it's not that far a cry from the reality for someone who is vegan, who has been trying to make a point to non-vegans who just don't get it. It's not that hard to be manipulated into having feelings when there really isn't a need to have uh, feelings of sympathy when it comes to inanimate objects, and then also having our feelings suppressed when it comes to feeling for actual sentient beings that are suffering because of our food system, because they've become, we've made them part of our food system. So tell me what you think. Have you seen Sausage Party? Did you like it? Do you agree with any of these criticisms? <laughs> Please do offer your feedback in the comments section below. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love